I know um, the Mexico jails don't fucking play, and you were in prison over there, right? Yeah, yeah. Sheesh. What was that first day like, man? I mean, I was there for five minutes. I had already got staff for my Jordans. Yeah. Really? So you walk in and somebody's trying to take your shoes off of you? <laughs> I I remember to this day, the black door, they just pushed me in. I got two big bags of all like American clothes. And I was, I told the guard, I was like, so where, where do I go live? Like, where's my uniform? Where's my cell? Cause I had already been in American prison before. So I was like, so, you know, set me up. And they were like, nah, you go find where you're gonna stay because in Mexico it's different. They don't give you stuff. What? <laughs> you gotta find your own way. It's like a little city inside of a little city. Yeah, so, man. you know, I'm standing there with my bags and this is the first time I see like gang members with like tattoos on their faces. And I'm talking about the early nineties, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So scary looking dudes, <laughs> you know, and they're, they're like, hey, you know, what size of shoe are you? And I'm like, I still thought I was gangster. I still was like, you know, what's up? And uh, now nah, he ended up stabbing me. Uh, I fell to the ground because I couldn't breathe. My, my lungs started filling up with blood because he got me with an ice pick in the back. Mm. Uh, they had to rush me to the hospital and then the doctor had to stab me again on the side to release the, the pressure and the blood. Mm -hmm. So I got, technically I got stabbed twice, Damn. you know? And um, after that, the people that I was I was working for got word that I was there, so they set me up with people that were already there. So they came to see me to the hospital, and they were like, uh, well, now you gotta go take care of business because you, you're not gonna make us look bad. So I'm like, man, I'm in Mexico. And it was hard for me, bro, because me being an American, they look at me as a traitor. They don't, they don't, they don't treat me good really they, they they think i'm i'm garbage because i'm i'm gold you know i i'm i'm golden i i grew up in the united states they don't know that it's rough over here too you know mm -hmm. and uh it, it was it was rough man every day every day was rough in there and uh every day we had to prove ourselves that i was there with another american um ricardo and that's my road dog to this day he lives out here in houston but uh he, he just had my back, and that's all we did. We watched each other's backs. We fought. We stabbed people. I mean, it was it was rough, but if I wouldn't have been young in the prime of my violence, I, I wouldn't have survived. Like, if you were to throw me in there right now, oh, they would eat me up alive right now. Like, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. I'm just going to keep it real. Wow. You know? Damn. So, yeah, that, that, that prison life is freaking crazy. It, it, it's just... Cause you, it's a whole way of thinking just to survive in there. You know what I mean? You, God, I mean that's that's the main thing that you when you're in, in those kind of prisons. I always tell people uh, watch the movie uh, "Get the Gringo" with uh, Mel Gibson. Mm -hmm. That'll give you like an insight of what Mexican prison was because you know they have guns in there, they have machetes in there. They're, it's not like an American prison where like they make sure there's no weapons in there. No, like they the cartel people have stuff in there. There's more drugs in there than there is outside. What? Yeah. You know, and, and, and that's where, like, a big cartel member would get caught, right? And we would party for, like, two weeks straight. Like, just, I had never seen, like, kilos of cocaine on plates. And it was just passed around, passed around. There was times that I would run because I was, I was young and I was with the main dude that had, like, the keys there. I would go hide in the cell because I just didn't want to do no more drugs no more. <laughs> I felt like my heart was like gonna come out of my chest Ew. and I would go hide and he would send his people to go find me and they would be like, come on, he wants you back over there. And I was like his little pet because he, he, he had a lot of love for me, you know what I mean? And I was just like, man, I had never been so disgusted with drugs in my <laughs> life. <laughs> like, it was just too much. Yeah, golly, man, Jesus, just, the 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 whole the whole government thing about Mexico scares the fuck out of me. Like, I remember going. I think we were went to Tijuana, and my sister was like, she had to go pee, and they were talking about taking her to jail for peeing mm -hmm. in the public. And we had to pay the guy like two hundred bucks, the police officer, just so she wouldn't go to jail and yep. shit. I was like, that shit scares the hell out of me. That Mexico, they the they old. know they know that Americans have money 
Mm. Okay, like more than they do. Mm-hmm. So like they they use that to their full advantage to and and they know that it's it's scary over there for Americans. Like, I mean, I I seen so much stuff over there, man, that I was like, I mean, no wonder how messed up I was. Not not just seeing the stuff on the streets and working for the cartel. Yeah, that was pretty pretty dark stuff I got to see. But just being in prison over there, seeing them stab people every day. The, the best part I always tell people, uh, a lot of the kingpins in there would, um, like, build their own soccer teams and buy their, buy their guys. They would invest money to make it into a really big sport. Inside the inside jail? Inside the jail. Mm-hmm. And at the end, the world championship, they would get into fights and start stabbing each other. It would be blood all over the place. And I would be like, man, Mexicans are pretty violent, man. <laughs> <laughs> pretty violent little dudes, man. <laughs> Gang. So how long were you? How long were you there? How long? Were you Almost there? four years. Four years? Yeah, I was waiting for the American consul to come and get me. Wow, why did why did it take so long? Uh, they know? they they had they, back in those days they had an ex- an exchange program going on with the U.S. where they were exchanging prisoners that you know Americans for Mexicans. So we had to wait for the right exchange to happen, and I was actually one of the last ones to get transferred like they stopped the program after that so i'm actually was lucky and blessed to be like to make it out of there because i always tell people if they wouldn't have came and got me i i would i wouldn't be alive right now i wouldn't really yeah because i always thought like well i guess me thinking i always think like no matter if you're american citizen right and you go to jail in any other country They'll, you know, send you back and you'll do your sentence here or something yeah, like if that. Yeah, you're famous. You know? <laughs> Basketball really, players. Yeah, really right. <laughs> yeah. I always thought that, though. Like, no matter mm. where you are in the country, the, the American government will send for you or come and get you or whatever. You know what I mean? They, they go and check on you. Like, they would go and check on me every month. They would bring me vitamins because they knew, like, the food was really bad. So they would bring me vitamins. They would bring me jackets and, and like, uh, sheets and... and blankets and stuff like that they mm. they're there to see you every month because the council is there mm. but they're not in a hurry to bring you home if you're not nobody important mm. you know what i mean yeah okay and then you do you get out um after four years or no nah, i got i got transferred to el paso and and before i even got to el paso they just moved me from prison to prison so i hit i was in, in san luis potosi then i was in saltillo Monterrey and then Juarez. Juarez was the worst one. That's the border where El Paso, um, and that's where they crossed me over. They crossed me over to uh, La Tuna Federal Prison in El Paso. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of famous guys have been there, like the guy from Blow. Uh, just a lot of cartel people. Um, so I got there. So once I got there, I was there for a year, and uh, every day that I did in Mexico counted as two. And then I got seven years off my sentence for pain and suffering mm. for, like, everything that happened to me over there. Yeah. And they released me, but I was only, I was free for about five minutes. The uh, Texas Rangers were there waiting for me to pick me up. Uh, I was wanted on a shooting case in Chicago. Mm. So I, I got extradited. I ended up in the uh, county jail in El Paso, Texas. Yeah. okay. Thank you for tapping in with us. In order to see more clips like this, Check out this video here or check out this one here.